Yeah, Professor Bayer, you can start. Professor Bayer, you can start. Okay, so it is my pleasure to introduce the speaker of today, Noriko Yu. Uh, she uh, is professor at Queen's University in Kingston, Ontario, Canada, at the Department of Mathematics and Statistics. Uh, she has held many visiting positions at numerous universities and research institutes all over the world. She is the author of an extensive literature on Calabria varieties, emphasizing both mathematical and theoretical physics aspects. She has supervised or co-supervised in total 11 PhD students. And the title of her talk is uh, Modularity of Calabriau Varieties. As you want, Mariko. Thank you. All right. So, uh, so uh, in this series of um, uh, seminar talks, so uh, I heard many uh, modularity results uh, about um, elliptic curves and some uh, on K3 surfaces. Uh, so today I'm going to discuss the uh, dimension three, uh, Calabria threefold, uh, defined over Q, and uh, discuss some. Um, uh, their modularity uh, sort of questions. Um, so elliptic curves are dimension one Calabrias, and um, K threes K three surfaces are dimension two Calabrias, and uh, some modularity questions um, sort of um, uh, quite active. Uh, from the work of Wiles and all that um, as, as followers. Uh, so uh, I'm going up the dimension. So dimension three, uh, generalization of elliptic curves. So those are the Calabria threefold. So here's the definition. Um, Calabria threefold is a complex projective variety of dimension three satisfying these two conditions. Uh, so uh, first condition is the H sub I uh, of X O X equals zero. So I is uh, in this case for dimension three, I is one and two. And the canonical bundle ought to be trivial. Uh, but uh, with this uh, definitions are not very friendly. So uh, we will introduce a linear algebra data, introducing Hodge numbers. So H sub IJ of X is the dimension of the Hodge cohomology group involving ice differential forms on the Calabrias. So uh, these numbers are integers. So it's, uh, between uh, I and J are running between zero and three uh, in point inclusive. And we have the complex conjugation. You can flip I and J and J and I. And also say a duality, uh, you can flip I and J with three minus I. Three is the dimension of the variety, three minus J. So using this linear algebraic data, Calabiao, Condition one is, will be the H10 and H20 is zero. And the Calabria condition two, this is not really an equivalence, but uh, it implies that uh, H30 of X, this is called the geometric genus from the definition. This is the dimension of H sub zero, X omega X3. But uh, canonical bundle, this is a canonical bundle, is being trivial. So this H30 of X is one. 
So geometric genus is one. So um, we can uh, characterize all this um, numerical invariant associated to um, Calabial threefold. First of all, Calabial threefold, the Kera manifold. So uh, we have to have a Kera class. So H sub one, one of X, which is the same as H to two of X have to be non-zero. And the Betty numbers are the uh, uh, sum of all this uh, Hochi numbers, whose sum, sub, sum is equal to K. And the uh, Euler characteristic is the alternating sum of these Betty numbers. So all these numbers you can calculate. So, uh, so you put all this information in the Hochi diamond. This is the, uh, this is the H10. H20, and then there is a duality along this, this vertical line here. That's the uh, I complex conjugation. And there is a duality along this horizontal line. I say a duality. So uh, this is the Hotch diamond. And um, if you add these numbers horizontally, you will get Betsy numbers. And if you take alternating sum, you will get the Euler characteristic. So the Euler characteristic of Calabiao depend on two, two Hodge numbers, H11 and H21. Uh, even now, today, we don't know whether this uh, Euler characteristic is bounded or not. We have more than a million uh, Calabiao threefold examples, but uh, so we don't know. And on the physics, string theory is the so-called mirror symmetry. Mirror symmetry occurs in this line, this line here, meaning flipping H11 and H21. So the mirror manifold is the you would interchange uh, H11 with H21, so that the Euler characteristic will change sign. So that's the mirror Calabial. Before also uh, many constructions about mirrors. So uh, it's, uh, there are lots, lots of Calabria threefold. Uh, so the most um, typical example where a lot of physics got done, also mathematics. Uh, so that's the Fermat uh, Quintic. Before. Uh, or you can take the uh, one parameter out the family of this fer Fermat Quintic. Okay, so uh, uh, the, these are the a lot of actions are taking place on this. And then um, this is one of the typical, typical examples. Uh, Quintics, uh, we can consider more generally uh, um, instead of just a projective, ordinary projective space, we can consider weighted projective space and then we may consider a lot more examples. So these are hypersurfaces, or you may also consider complete intersections. So those are the uh, many examples of this kind. And then this is the sort of beginning of all this um, mirror symmetry and all that. And uh, we know that the elliptic curves are double cubic. That's the typical definition of elliptic curves. If you look at K3 surfaces, you can look at the double sextics, double cover of the degree six uh, curves. So why that's K3. So along this line, you can take double octics. You can surface a degree eight surface, and then you take double cover of that. So uh, th th those uh, so double optics, these will give you uh, Calabial threefold. And also, uh, elliptic curve, elliptic curves are dimension one Calabial, K3 surfaces are dimension two Calabial. So you may take a product and quotient out by non-symplectic involution. Non-symplectic meaning not fixing the uh, canonical one form or two forms, okay? 
So these will give you a Calabial threefold. And these are the ones that it's a computation wise, uh, this gives you a lot of, lot of examples of Calabial threefold, especially for modularity questions, um, we use these examples. And of course, a combinatorial construction using reflexive um, polytopes. This will give you toric Calabial threefold. So this is the source of a construction of Calabial. So this will give you millions, uh, million, millions, cross to millions of Calabial threefold. Okay. So uh, uh, once we have this uh, Calabial threefold, we can also consider it mirrors, mirror, mirror Calabials. Uh, so so. Uh, well, so, so, so uh, mirror construction is done by string theorists, and we have to make these steps, each step uh, much more mathematically rigorous. For instance, if you want to uh, argue modularity, uh, we have to know where they are defined and uh, if they have singularities because they singularities where they are defined and so on. So uh, the resolutions. Resolutions, getting a smooth resolution, that's a very big step. So uh, modularity question boils down to, uh, the formulation is in terms of L functions. And these L functions, uh, it's formulated uh, using a cohomology, have to go through a, a cohomology meaning uh, we have to have a linear algebra data to construct even these L functions. So uh, we cannot do uh, for all complex Calabial. So uh, we now assume that uh, Calabial threefold is defined over Q, for instance, by a hypersurface or a complete intersection. So you have equations defining these Calabials with coefficient of a Q. So meaning these guys becomes Calabial if you tensor with C, then all this uh, topological or geometrical invariant have to satisfy Calabial conditions. So uh, since uh, we are considering these Calabials uh, defined by hypersurfaces or complete intersections having a coefficient in Q, so we may assume that the coefficient in Z, uh, you can invert some M, some integer M. So uh, once you do that, uh, then uh, you can define the reduction modulo P as long as P is uh, relatively prime to this M. Uh, so X sub P will be the reduction of X modulo P. And uh, so we say that P is a good prime if uh, reduction is smooth uh, over the closure of FP bar. Um, so if not, uh, it's, uh, you have something about primes. So uh, it's a congruence data function. This is a very classical object. Uh, you can count the number of rational point and you cook up a formal one exponential sum, and that's the data function. So, but uh, this uh, object that uh, for any varieties of a finite field, uh, this I uh, studied in the 1970s. That's when I was a graduate student. That was the highlight of the, uh, the this veil conjecture and all that. So uh, that's, uh, you know, so, uh, so, so this, uh, well, uh, still, this function is uh, it's, uh, we want to interpret this function in terms of linear algebra data. So uh, this this uh, homology groups are introduced to, to linearize all these theories. So that's Grothendieck's uh, invention of etal homology groups. So uh, <coughs> the big L to be a prime different from your P, and you consider Frobenius morphism. And then uh, you cook up the set homology 
H sub I et al X P bar Q L. So all this growth and X machinery. So this is a very good veil cohomology theory in the sense that uh, if you uh, the, the, the specialization theorem gives you the, uh, um, it becomes independent. Uh, so H X P bar. So, so this is the way we define this, but this will be the same as uh, specialization theorem, it's our cohomology here. And uh, also, uh, the, if you tensor this with C, then the, you recover the Prashikawa, uh, the Prashikawa, uh, the, the, the ordinary cohomology theory. So the dimension of this guy is the same as the uh, Vecchi number. And uh, also, there is a Poincare duality. Uh, so uh, it's a very good cohomology theory. So uh, we can represent this uh, Frobenius morphism on this uh, vector space here, QL vector space of dimension B sub IX. And then uh, you can consider the characteristic polynomial. So uh, characteristic polynomial will give you, uh, so, so this is the uh, highlight of 1970s. This, this. So the uh, characteristic polynomial has the integer coefficient independent of L. And the degree is a B sub I. And then the uh, Poincare duality gives you the relation between P sub I and P sub six minus I. The relation is like that. Since uh, everything, all coefficient of a characteristic polynomial integers, if you uh, decompose this into a linear factor in the algebraic closure, then uh, it's complex absolute value of the reciprocal root have to be PTI over two. That's the Riemann hypothesis for varieties of a finite field. And furthermore, congruence data function is a just a rational function expressed in terms of characteristic polynomial involving odd, odd uh, cohomology groups here, or odd indices, or odd, odd soup index cohomology, and then here's the even ones. And the Poincare duality and all that for Calabria threefold congruence data function just takes this form. Uh, denominator. So uh, P3 only it's, uh, because P1 and P6 are uh, one. So that's what the only thing here. And then um, this is a P0, P2, P4, and P6. Uh, duality gives you this. P1 over P, and then uh, P4 is the um, let's say you just replace from this condition. So P4 is um, P2 related to just the change of variable by PT. Okay, so uh, it's of course uh, many modularity uh, results uh, proved in the last 20 or 25 years. They uh, formulated in terms of uh, Galois representations. So uh, the absolute Galois group will act on this. Um, the, the, there is an absolute Galois group, and then there is a erratic Galois representations uh, associated to this uh, homology group. So uh, this is the way all uh, Galois modularity is formulated in terms of involving this Galois representation. But uh, Galois representations are uh, so basically uh, you uh, resort to a linear algebra. Okay. So, uh, so uh, we'll, our L function, uh, which we'll use to describe modularity, will be involving this, uh, the way I defined, have to go through this linear algebra erratic homology groups. And this uh, with erratic homology groups, so you have this characteristic polynomial. So that's the way you define it. P is a different from P is running, product runs all prime, which are good, different from L. Now, if L equal P, uh, you, you need to use some 
uh, not a dark homology, but the periodic homology group. But uh, still L series is it. So, so uh, for Calabria three for the L1 and L2 are rather simple. So uh, we will just uh, consider L of XS to be the uh, um, L3, three is the dimension. So uh, that's what um, we are going to consider. Okay. And also well, we have this left fixed point formula uh, because to describe this characteristic polynomial, uh, we will introduce the trace of the Frobenius. Then the number of rational point will be expressed in terms of this formula. This is a left fixed point formula. And this, uh, we, we use this formula to, for computational purpose because uh, we want to determine the characteristic polynomial bounding these um, traces. So uh, T2, T2, T2 of P, uh, so, so number of rational point is uh, one plus P cubed plus one plus P, T2 P, T3 P, because T, T0 P is one, T6 P is P cubed, T1 is zero, T5 is zero for Calabiaus. So what T2 P and the T4 is the P times T2 P. Uh, so well, only two unknowns, T2 and T3. And T2 of P is bounded by P times H11. So, uh, and then the T3 P is bounded by P3 times P to the 3 over 2. So uh, this is for Calabria's threefold. So this, so, so in order to establish um, modularity, we have to uh, compute these numbers in this range. So this is a very useful formula. Okay, so the modularity question is from the way we defined this L function, uh, if you give a P, then uh, you count the number of rational points, and then now uh, you compute the characteristic polynomial. Uh, so locally, you can determine these guys, but the uh, modularity question is really, are there any modular forms or global functions will determine this function, L, L function? Not not computing for individual prime speed. So we need uh, some global function. And then this is either modular forms or more generally automorphic forms. So we can do this uh, in some uh, special cases, namely when Calabria's threefold is rigid, meaning H21 equals zero. So the Hodge diamond looks like that. H11 cannot be zero. So, um, so for this rigid Calabiaus, uh, uh, the mirror symmetry doesn't work because uh, if you interchange uh, H11 and H21, H11 becomes zero. So it's not Calabiaus, so there's something called Hano. The mirrors of rigid are not Calabiaus default. So, uh, so uh, this uh, rigid ones are really, really a generalization of elliptic curves because the uh, characteristic polynomial, P3, this is a degree two polynomial, the, just this one minus T3 PT plus P cubed T squares, where P, T3 P is bounded by twice of P3 over two. P3 equal two. So uh, this looks like an elliptic curve characteristic polynomial elliptic curve. For elliptic curves, so you have T1, and then instead of three, you have just P. And then, uh, so three is replaced by one. So uh, the, this is, for this, we know the modularity. <laughs> so we proved this uh, around 2010. Uh, with Gobea, Fernando, and then Durafe independently. But uh, every rigid Calabria threefold is modular. 
Okay, so uh, that means we can find the modular form f of weight four. Four is a dimension plus one on some gamma zero of n, such that the L function is in fact determined by uh, this modular form. And then uh, this n is uh, divisible by only bad primes. For each, for each case, uh, we know how to get this n uh, once we have the equations. So the uh, idea of a proof is uh, really, really a generalization of virus um, this, uh, uh, to Galois two-dimensional Galois representations associated to rigid carabials and the modular form of weight four. Uh, they they are isomorphic. That's the way you prove this. Uh, it, so, so it's really the uh, it's, it's very similar proof to the virus. So the examples of so, so rigid carabials. So this was about uh, twenty about twenty thirteen. We had about something like uh, about four thirty thirty or so uh, rigid carabials, and then. Uh, now that number extended a lot more, but um, it's the Helena Burrell, she was my postdoc. <clears throat> so she started out with, this is a toric construction, uh, started out with Bucus, and then uh, Bucus constructed the elliptic curves uh, associated to root lattices. So uh, if you start with A3, root lattice A3, so this, uh, and now uh, you can get the rigid calabias. Uh, so the equation, it's a toric construction. So uh, you you get this uh, equation. But uh, t is also a variable. So in in the p p four, but then it's uh, with p three cross p one. And so if you um if you uh, compute Hodge numbers. Uh, of course, uh, you, you start out with this equation, so you know everything is defined over Q. Uh, but then uh, getting, um, finding singularities and resolving them, this process takes a long time. We need, need uh, one or two more papers to uh, resolve singularities. And then, uh, so, so you will get the rigid Carabiao with H11 is 50. So uh, B2, uh, B3 equal two, and then for this case, the modular form is given by eta product. And this is the gamma zero of six. And this, so that's the, uh, uh, so two and three are bad primes here. So, uh, and uh, this is the, um, it's, it's, uh, I discussed the, uh, already the, uh, Quintic, uh, the quintic uh, deformation. So when um, you take lambda equal one, you get uh, this. Um, so quintic. This is a chat shown quintic, and then um, this uh, you, you again uh, you have to resolve singularities. Uh, so so singularities are ordinary double point. You have 125 of them. And the results of blowing this up, you will get the H21 equals zero. Uh, so uh, this modular form of weight four is in gamma zero of five, gamma zero of 25. Five is obviously a bad line. Uh, so uh, along this line, along this line, uh, this, this is in P4. But then if you can go on to weighted projective for spaces, giving, it, giving a weight to each variables, and then you consider um, you, 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 either hypersurface or complete intersections, then we'll get the 14 one parameter families of Calabial threefold. And for, for this, uh, you keep the parameter. Then uh, you can also consider the Picard uh, Hooks differential equation satisfy the period. 
And for this 14 one parameter families, uh, this um, hypergeometric um, period is a solution of a hypergeometric equation x four three. So for so so recent paper by physicists, uh, uh, they, they uh, described um, uh, described uh, this um, this uh, for fourteen parameters uh, in detail, fourteen parameter families in detail. Uh, but uh, we also got the congruences, super congruences for this one parameter families. So for this um, 14 one parameter families, um, uh, we, we, so uh, this, um, this the conifold, at conifold point, conifold meaning uh, singularity, uh, which are double point. Uh, we can resolve these things and then now uh, we, we will get for these 14 families, we will get the modular form of weight four from some gamma zero of n. Yeah, so, uh, so, 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 so at conifold point, it's the same, same as this one for uh, uh, so you resolve singularities, then you will get the modular form of weight four. So uh, this. It's becoming a rigid, and then uh, this will give you a um, modular form weight four. So this is in our recent paper of in Ron and in two, but in Dudirin, uh, this uh, we determined all this um, modular forms there. We have a table there. Okay, so uh, that's a rigid Calabi-Aus. So the next question is that. Uh, when we have a B3 equal four, that's the next simplest case. So the Hodge diamond looks like that. Okay, so then the Euler characteristic is uh, twice of H11 minus one. Uh, so either this, or we may consider Calabi-Aus where H11 is one, and then uh, H21 is, is non-zero. Then the flipping this will get the Hodge diamond of this type. So that's the mirror, mirror of uh, Calabria where H11 equal one. So uh, this 14 one parameter families that belongs to that category. Okay. So uh, these are the Calabria threefold we are going to consider. So, um, so the construction with the so, so B3 equal four, uh, it's, uh, it's, there are several examples as, as uh, well, Chris uh, may be constructed a lot more of this kind with B3 is the whole four. Uh, so uh, our, our, because uh, our purpose is trying to compute the L function. So uh, I'll choose the hypersurface. This is example one. Due to Nigo and from Gaiman, 1995. So you consider this um, complete intersection in P7 defined by this equation. So uh, this uh, singular locus R16 double point together with uh, four plane conic intersections intersecting uh, in the square, so conic intersections. And then, um, so this, once uh, those are in the 14, one parameter family are all rigid? Uh, 14 at the conifold point, at conifold point, it's the same situation as here. Okay, yes. uh, conifold, so when you put lambda equal one, then lambda equal one gives you a conifold point. Uh, so so uh, uh, 14 one parameter families, so you can choose a conifold point, then uh, these 14 families become rigid. Okay, okay, thanks. Okay. Okay. So uh, this, uh, so, so uh, resolving singularities, again, uh, the resolution is the most difficult part for this rigidness in any case. 
we get the, the all well h h h h p q equal one, where p plus q equals three, and h one one is forty one. So that's a b three equal four. And um, this is the example for them. The, 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 uh, the, the, this is the Pentagon, Pentagon example. First example was considered by Hill's book. Uh, when I was at Max Planck, when I was very young, he showed me Pentagon probably else, and that's where uh, many generalization occurred uh, from Gehman, Werner, or later from Sunny Shulton, and then uh, they consider the Pentagon, uh, this is the SQ Pentagon equation. So uh, X equal to two lo looks like this. Okay, so uh, uh, that's the Pentagon, SQ Pentagon. And we'll consider the affine uh, threefold uh, defined by this equation. Of course, you homogen homogenize this. Um, uh, it's, 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 Oh, of course, this deal from the way it's defined. Five is about prime, two is bad, and so on. Uh, and three also, uh, you can give up primes. Uh, so homogenize this equation, and then you it, it, it's a quintic, quintic. So you will get the Calabial threefold with uh, all one HPQ equal one, where P plus Q equals three and H11 is 141. So uh, this is again a B3 4. And then, uh, so this is another example. And then one more example is the double octic. Special example of double octic. So, so this example is a double octic, so double cover of this uh, octic. Hyperplane. Hyper so, uh, Koch number is again, I grabbed, but primes are two and three. So, this is the way to construct. There are many more. There are many more the examples, but uh, so, so uh, you can go through uh, Chris Meyer's uh, book and then they get a lot of examples with the B3 equal four. Um, so, uh, uh, what do we want to compute is the L function. Okay, so uh, so the, we have the Calabial threefold X defined over Q with Hodge, uh, Hodge numbers HPQ equal one, where P plus Q equals three. So uh, it's a B3 equal four. So the characteristic polynomial, the characteristic polynomial is of degree four over Q. So we will assume, we'll assume that, that this polynomial is irreducible over Q. If it's reducible already, Calabiaus are coming from some product varieties. So uh, we, uh, we're assuming that uh, this is some um, irreducible over Q. The, the, this definition, uh, Q is very important, okay? Later we will go up to a bit of a higher extension of Q. But uh, so, um, so then uh, if you have a degree four polynomial, now if you go to all the way to the Q bar, the Bell conjecture says that this will decompose into a product of linears where alpha P, beta P algebraic integers, and then uh, th this have to be a complex conjugate. So uh, each each root, this local uh, root, have to have absolute value p to the three over two. Uh, so uh, if you expand this out, we'll get the equation of this kind. Uh, so only we got two parameters, a one and a two, because uh, a a a a a. a a3 is uh, the p times p cubed times a1, and the a4 is uh, p, p, p to the 3, p to the 3 squares. You, you multiply this out, and you get p to 6. So uh, in terms of a, a trace, in terms of a trace, uh, a1, 
A sub one is a, just a trace of the flow venues, and the A two is the half of a trace of flow venues square minus flow venues p squares trace. And we know we have the deficit fixed point formula. So T three p is bounded by four times P to the three over two, and T two p is a P to the H one one. So uh, we look around numbers on this. Uh, so this is the computational uh, part of the equation. Okay, so some modularity results. So first uh, we have the example of uh, a complete intersection and P7 considered by Naigo and von Gehmen. But um, this is, so, so uh, this one is a bit of a, um, this example, we are, so the whole purpose that we are doing this is that we want to get uh, uh, sort of a rank four motif, modular modular forms or something coming out. But um, that, that's our aim, trying to get that. But this example, uh, just L function, just uh, decomposed into L of chi cube S and L of chi minus one S, where chi is a hectic character on this Gaussian field and defined by uh, sending a prime ideal to A, where A is uh, congruent to one modulo two plus two square root minus one and chi of minus one is just a twist by norm. So this is a disappointment, big disappointment. We are not getting any new, uh, you know, modular forms or anything. We don't want to have heck characters. So the, but then the idea of a proof uh, is, uh, uh, this is the idea we're going to use later. The idea is that um, you remember, L function was defined using this third cohomology group. Uh, so uh, the composition like this means third cohomology group have to decompose into rank two motifs. Okay, so in this case, rank two motifs are H30 plus H03. Eigenvalues are looks like that cubed, that bar cubed. And then uh, H21 and H12, the eigenvalues are just that, that, that bar, that bar, that, that bar. So uh, this decomposition will give you the uh, decomposition of the uh, L function. Uh, but then uh, if you look at the geometry of this, uh, this complete intersection in P7, we will see that uh, our complete intersection X will be covered by a triple product of the elliptic of E. E is defined by Y squares is one plus X to the four. And then this one has a complex multiplication by Q square root minus one. So uh, this, uh, L function of X uh, occur as a factor of L function of this guy here. So uh, because this uh, this one has a complex multiplication, so all our Calabias also have to have complex multiplication. Of course, you have to uh, define what it means to um, for Calabias three four have complex multiplication, but uh, this is a shortcut because it's covered by elliptic curve with CM. So we say that the X has CM by this uh, quadratic extension. And in fact, uh, our guess, or our well, we cannot even formulate a conjecture yet, but then our speculation is that uh, if um, Calabiao is covered by an uh, elliptic curve or um, K3 surface with CM, uh, it doesn't have to be triple product of E. You can take it E cross S, where uh, BOSA S is a K3 surface. Uh, so BOSA has a CM, 
then uh, our L function will decompose into uh, something um, involving Hecke characters. And then if we involving Hecke characters, you are not going to get genuine automorphic forms like the Jigel modular forms and things like that. So uh, CM situation is a bad news, I'm afraid. So we will introduce something called the real multiplication. Real multiplication by this, uh, we are uh, looking at the Calabial threefold with HQ equal one, where P plus Q equals three. So this is again the B3 equal four situation. And that K will be the real quadratic extension. Q adjoins square root D. Oh, and then O sub K is the ring of integers. G sub K is the discriminant. And we say that the Calabrian threefold X has a real multiplication uh, with this K, the real quadratic field, if we can find a non-trivial algebraic correspondence from X to X defined over this real quadratic extension. Okay, so uh, algebraic correspondence. So this is a bijection from X to X. Uh, uh, so uh, this, uh, of course, uh, uh, Finding algebraic correspondence is a highly, highly non-trivial task. And then, uh, in many cases, you cannot do that. And once you have this algebraic correspondence, this must induce an automorphism of the cohomology group. So this is the Hodge cohomology, which is preserving Hodge structure. So for instance, uh, it's, it's, H30 is uh, generated by holomorphic three form omega x. Then now uh, this uh, automorphism psi star have to send omega x to alpha times omega x, where alpha is some element in K, but not in Q. And of course, have to uh, have to induce. Uh, uh, Galois correspondence, uh, so, so psi have to uh, give rise to automorphism psi star of data homology, which is in the Galois representation. So uh, this is what you have to construct. Uh, it's um, theoretically, uh, that's easy, but the actual correspondence, the actual construction is uh, the, the Extremely difficult. So, uh, what kind of Calabrian threefold will have real multiplication? So, we have the skew pentagon, skew pentagon. Uh, so, if you consider skew pentagon like that, then uh, we can um, uh, obtain this Calabrian quintix uh, as a quotient of the variety defined by this. Um, this, this variety defined by this equations. Now from the way defined I equal one to three and then J, J equal one to six. And then here, it's just, these are the equations. So uh, symmetric group S3 obviously act on here, commuting those. So how do you cook up automorphism? So, there's a, so if you do this, uh, we can get the automorphism with fifth root of unity, so that, that's fine. Uh, so we'll consider the graph of these automorphisms, Z cross X, and we'll push down to, that's the covered by, this is covered, X is covered by this, the quotient of this by S3 cross S3. So going down to x cross x, we'll get the automorphism defined over this, which is um, Q joined, it's a real quadratic extension, Q adjoined square root five. Uh, but uh, we are not able to construct explicitly this algebraic correspondence yet, uh, trying, trying. 
we don't know how uh, how to express this um, okay but then once we have this algebraic correspondence uh, taking alpha to be square root five then now uh, we'll get the condition uh, compatibility with the hot structure compatibility with Galois representation okay okay so this is one example quintic uh, skew pentagon example. And then the chink uh, shoot von Stratton example, they actually did construct a correspondence defined Q you know, joint square root two for this double optic. It looks like that. Okay, so this is the kind of things you have to get done Respondents, uh, this is a bijection from here, making a change of variables and things like that. Square root two, Q square root two. So this is what you have to do for the example two as well, but uh, we haven't been able to do that yet. Okay, so for this example, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, so, so the idea for is that um, we have this correspondence, then this induces a map, H30 sending a omega x holomorphic 3 form to square root to omega x. That's what we wanted. And then uh, so the map acts on this uh, rank two motif by multiplication by square root two. And then for this guy, act by minus square root two. So uh, H3 will decompose into the direct sum of two two dimensional sub motifs uh, plus eigenspace by square root two, minus eigenspace by minus square root two. So each, each one will give you a two dimensional Galois representation. So that this. Um, uh, so that will come into the proof. So Hilbert modularity is that uh, Hilbert modularity is first of all, the Konsani Shouten example or Chink Shoot von Stratten example. We had um, this first real quadratic extension for first example, example two, Q square root five, and example three, Q square root square root, uh, so, sorry, sec, 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 example two, Q square root five, and example three, Q square root two, then there is a Hilbert modular form, weight two, four, and the level N for uh, CS, uh, and then now uh, for the uh, double optic, it's like, it's, uh, the level is six square root two. This is ideal in all K, such that the L function will decompose. L function, so, so what we are doing here is we decomposed H3 into sub motifs of rank two over K, over K. So this will decompose into the Hilbert modular form L of Fs and L of F by S. F bar is the Galois conjugate of F weight for two flipping form to the level N. So that's the Hilbert modular form. So uh, then, uh, uh, so, so, so the, uh, to get the Hilbert modularity, this, uh, this you have to do a generalized, say, about the criterion matching the uh, numbers. Uh, this, uh, this was done in Durape, Passetti, and shoot. Well, quite a long calculation. Okay, so the idea of proof, as uh, I already mentioned, uh, so, so uh, uh, we have a Galois representation, loss of L, so GL, H, so this is uh, B3 equal four. So you have a four dimensional Galois representation. So if you go and restrict this Galois representation to the real quadratic extension, so Gal Q bar over K goes to this automorphism over this extension. It's a, it is a direct sum of two, 
two dimensional Galois representations. Okay, so uh, you can write this representation uh, and the restriction to be a sigma lambda plus sigma lambda. So, so sigma lambda will be the two dimensional Galois representation defined over this real quadratic extension. Lambda is a prime over L. And uh, we are showing that uh, this uh, four dimensional Galois representation is in fact induced Galois representation of the sigma lambda. And also you can have a, for Hilbert modular forms, this is in the same way you prove the modularity for elliptic curves, Hilbert modular form over K you have a two dimensional Galois representation. And then somehow you, uh, you have to show the equivalence or isomorphism between the two, these two representation and then this. So that's what, uh, that's what uh, done in this paper here, the um, dura paper set issue. Okay. Now, so uh, so Jigel modularity. So uh, we don't want to have a L function just over real quadratic extension. For these two examples, okay, skewed pentagon and double octic examples, uh, we had the Hilbert modular form defined over real quadratic extensions, uh, but then uh, we can lift this to a Jigel modular form of weight three genus two and the level capital flux N will be the discriminant so the DK squares times norm of N. So uh, the, this one is, uh, what's the number 200, 22,500 or something. And this one is a six, something about 6,000. The lifting Hilbert modular form. So uh, if you, Consider the L function over Q, not over K, this L function will coincide with the Jigel model. That's the lift. And the L function here is the Andrian of L function. Okay, so uh, as you see, level is enormous. Level is enormous. So computation wise, I mean, uh, these guys, um, the computation is just uh, oh, it's impossible, it's almost impossible. So the um, uh, we we the idea of proof is here is that the characteristic polynomial of a real quadratic extension will split into two pieces, like a Hilbert modular Hilbert modularity result, and then uh, so if you compute compute uh, this, uh, at, at least we can compute this one. So uh, so double optic case uh, P7, for P equals seven. So, so two and three, two and three for double optic, those are the back primes. So next, so you compute this. Then uh, that's a degree four polynomial to decompose into two pieces like that over Q square root two P. And then uh, corresponding to this, you will get the Jigger module. Uh, so uh, you, can, you can do this calculation uh, for uh, double optics, it's not, but then for uh, skew pentagon, this is getting quite impossible. I cannot uh, even write the equation uh, P10 in one line or two lines. So, uh, uh, so, so Q, Q square root five, it decomposes like that. And so the idea how this got is the existence of Jigel modular form for F, uh, we use the result of Johnson, Roy and Robert. Uh, they, uh, they lift, so, so, so uh, uh, they, they have a, there, there is a Jigel modular form flux F of weight K is a half plus two plus four in this case three genus two and the level N 
so satisfying you know, the series of conditions which I didn't put down everything. One of them is uh, f, block f is the eigenfunction of this uh, vector operator t11 pp1 pp p squares. And then uh, these eigenvalues you can compute using Hilbert modular forms. So, uh, so like uh, from the way we decompose this into Jigger module, so eigenvalues, things like uh, computed. So, so at the end, what the conclusion by uh, Johnson, Rowan, and Robert is that flux F is indeed a lifting of F in the Jigger module form of weight. Uh, so this will give you a uh, rank four, rank, rank, uh, 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 rank three, so minus two, uh, rank motif. So uh, because uh, in the early tw 2019, uh, we had the uh, workshop for Zuko von Straten's sixth birthday. And we didn't have any examples of a jiggle modular form coming up. So uh, this is it. So that's uh, a bit uh, over time. No, no. So that's no, no. Point. Any comment, Chris? Thank you very much for going over those things so systematically. Um, Duco von Straten and Vasily Goloshev uh, haven't completed their work, but they showed me a Kalabi Yao of level 79. Yes. And uh, the work of Johnson Long and Roberts here lifts to a, a paramodular form of, of yeah. level N and weight yeah. three. Oh. And so there oh, is a- Not a, a not a Jigel. It, it is a Jigel modular form, it is. Oh, okay, okay. Just a discrete subgroup isn't a gamma not of n kind of group. It's a paramodular group. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wow. And so for the for seventy nine, um, there is a, a paramodular form of weight three with some matching order factors. So this seems yeah, to be an example yeah. of the generic type. Oh, I see. This paper is out. Uh, it's a series of notes. I'm sure Duco would send it to you. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll ask Duco. Said level 79. Okay. Yep. All right. The paramodular. All right. Okay. More questions? Uh, may I ask you, is there a general conjecture? about which Calabi Yau three folds uh, are expected to be modular of some kind, or what is it? Here we have seen concrete examples uh, and yeah, modularity. Well, uh, yes, uh, because some- um, Which is the uh, general well, feeling? Yeah, well, uh, so in, in um, in the uh, spirit of Langland's um, philosophy, any Calabiaus should uh, come from some kind of modular forms, but uh, we cannot do everything at once. So, so first we nail down the uh, rigid Calabiaus, they are modular, yeah. that's a B3 equal to. So yes. this is the next step we are considering B3 equal four. That's the next simplest case. So yes. what kind of a modular forms are showing up in this situation? Yeah. That's what, uh, so, so uh, of course, uh, of course, the uh, next step is uh, B, B3 equal eight, B3 equal eight, uh, but uh, because uh, then uh, when uh, B3 gets uh, big numbers like that, uh, we, we cannot uh, get, um, uh, we cannot expect to uh, determine uh, modular forms, even the jigger modular forms. So we don't know what kind of thing. Of so course. so uh, then now uh, only only sort of um, uh, thing uh, we can consider is a motivic. 
just a chunk yeah. of H3, yeah. what kind of modular forms will come out from uh, yeah. uh, associated uh, motifs of H3. So that's, yeah. Uh, yeah. that's the kind of, uh, so uh, we cannot, uh, uh, so, so at the moment uh, we are building the, you know, database for examples of B3 sure. control. But then uh, computation-wise, I mean, elliptic curves are baby situation. Yeah. Uh, the, these computations are just, just, uh, I mean, uh, impossible. I, yeah. I need an army of postdocs to do this. <laughs> and then another question. Um, you need to consider the... Uh, non-singular model of these uh, colors. Yes, yes, in, yeah, because in the what extent, in what extent do you need a, uh, um, an explicit uh, des description of, of these non-singular models uh, as in Sagier and Hirzebruck or so? Uh, in order to make this computation, uh, uh, which is the, the information of the non-singular model that in general is needed in order to make... Yes, uh, because the uh, L functions are at the moment uh, we, we are using for the smooth models. And then uh, that's um, uh, because some um, singularities, singularities, uh, this was our, you know, this, uh, mis misunderstanding in the beginning of the program, uh, we thought all the singularities are all defined over Q or something, but that's not the case. If that's the case, we start counting number of rational points that get too, too, too many. So uh, matching uh, this Galois representation, you match all factors like that, that doesn't match at all. Yeah. So uh, that's the problem. So. Uh, Singularities, you have to determine singularities, where they are defined, how to resolve it. Once they are resolved, where are they defined and all that kind of things have to be considered. So resolution is really, I mean, uh, because uh, this uh, field measure is uh, resolving singular resolution of singularities and they even do it for uh, characteristic P but uh, they, they don't uh, give you how to, uh, you know, determine where they are defined, uh, how exactly. to resolve. Yeah, exactly. so exactly. just the existence. So Thank this you. part, we have to do it by ourselves. And at the moment, uh, we can only use sort of toric resolutions, toric approach. I see. Yeah. It's, Thank you uh, very much. That's, that part is a real challenge. Yeah? And then uh, nobody, uh, resolution people are not doing that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I hope Abianka is still alive. <laughs> Quite a lot of work, of course. Are there more questions? Remarks? So among the 14 families, I think this Quintic one is most studied. Yeah, my quintic one is the first example, it's the smallest level. Yeah, uh, others, uh, I, if, if you go on then, um, so, so that's the only one in the ordinary projective force space. Mm -hmm. Other examples are on the weighted projective spaces. Is there any and, precise reference where we can see the R14 and some basic descriptions about them? Yes, yes, you go to my paper with Rin Ron. Then non Pantin two. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, there we have uh, explicit equations, and also in that paper we also wrote down the mirror, mirror, mirrors of those. Okay, it is recent one in twenty twenty round, right? When twenty twenty, uh, yeah, wow, well, uh, it, it appeared twenty. Okay, I will find it out. I will find it out. Advances in mass. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Okay. Are Hello, you... ma'am. Yeah, I have one question. Here you mentioned uh, the faulting share, uh, faulting share Leibniz methods because those methods are very specific to uh, comparing to uh, LNIC two-dimensional representations. Yes. So yeah, that's why you restrict to some 
filled and then you get uh, that like sum of two two that's dimensions right, that's results. right because yeah. at the moment the only only thing works is that you have to resort to two dimensional Galois representations that's why you have the machineries yeah so the means do you know any means any generalization of faulting say Leibniz for at least for three dimension or no, yeah, if you get three dimensions, so, I, I have no idea what to do. Oh, okay. So, so the next step is uh, you somehow uh, B3 equal eight or something when they could decompose into the two dimensional pieces or two yeah. dimensional, four dimensional pieces, then may, you may be able to uh, tackle this. Uh, but uh, uh, and of course, all machineries in the last 20 or 30 years, they are developed for two-dimensional Galois representations. Nothing else. Yeah. 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 Uh, that recent paper, they already mentioned that parabotular from there, they compare some methods they give for some n-dimensional representation. But obviously, that is very specific. Also. Yeah, but the, no, not explicitly. Yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah not theory. Yeah. And this okay. answer, this for these examples, you really have to, uh, you know, do uh, very dirty work, do calculations, and then everything has to be very explicit. Yes. So you have to really understand nuts and bolts in each step. Uh, it, it's not abstract theory. Yeah, and what because here the method works because the representation is actually you are able to form it's a induced representation. Means so in general, is there any way or means uh, when we can say some representation is induced representation? Means uh, means here very oh, specific. No, I, 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 I'm not the I'm not the representation okay, okay. theorist. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I don't know. Yeah, means yeah. Okay, okay, it's okay. Okay, thank you, ma'am. All right. Okay, are there more questions? No? If okay, not, then no. that's it. <laughs> well, that's professor no, you end, uh, professor you. Okay. okay. Okay, that's good. <laughs> See you in for 20, 20 years. years. <laughs> See you again in 20 years. Yes, yes. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. So, Peter, bye for, thanks for sharing also. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Okay, then we will end this meeting here now. Okay, so bye. Bye. Bye bye, Noriko. Yeah.